Sometimes in life all you need to stay on the straight and narrow is a little bit of faith. Whether that be a religious belief or otherwise, that undying belief that you are on the right path keeps you going. But what if your faith could be used against you so callously and in such a manipulative, predatory way that not only are you being robbed blind and manoeuvred to committing unacceptable acts, but you then turn to your new oppressor and thank them for it. In Grand Theft Auto V we encounter one such example of this, an exploitative cult that claims the function of a religion, but might possibly have motivations that are anything but benevolent. So join me as we dive down yet another rabbit hole in an attempt to uncover the truth behind the Epsilon program. Picture this. Suburban life. You're a middle-aged man with a family that's left you. Either due to shrewd investments, a well-paying job, or a lifestyle of criminal activities, you're loaded. The midlife crisis of fast cars and SUVs has come and gone. And yet despite all that, you don't feel fulfilled. Maybe it's because your wife left you and took the kids. Or maybe you simply need a sense of belonging. And then one day, you see it. A billboard of a man wearing simply far too much pale blue to be sane, with the message, unknow what you know, confront who you are, learn the real truth, the Epsilon program, with a link to a website. Could this man truly hold the answers to enlightenment? Or could there possibly be a scheme far more interesting at play? For some reason, Michael DeSanta shall endeavour to find out. Sure enough, the link on that billboard does lead to an actual in-game website, www.epsilonprogram.com. And before you even open the site, it poses a question. Do you want to be happy and free from thought, or continue dying in ignorance without knowing your true eternal self? Being happy and free from thought versus dying in ignorance just sounds like two different takes on the same thing. However, let's move on to the landing page where we may receive more information. There's far too much blue going on here, it's like a cult of Manchester City fans. Welcome to the Epsilon program. Do you want to be happy and free from thought or continue dying in ignorance without knowing your true eternal self? You are controlled by lots of powerful forces you do not understand. Do you want to believe? Are you everything you need and less and more? Then you are ready. Do you want to be rich in powerful tools? Our time has come, and so has yours if you let it. The tract is now being written. The nonsensical ramblings of what I presume to be this madman. There's a big link to evaluating your identity, we won't click on that yet. And there's also a link to where you can purchase Epsilon robes, but we can't buy them yet, so we'll deal with that later. Now there are six pages of incessant bollocks to get through, so... Let's start with Meet Chris Fromage, or as I like to call him, Chris Fromage. Because I think it would be really funny if his surname was the French word for cheese. To understand the Epsilon program and the powerful tools it can unleash in your life, you need to understand its founder, Chris Fromage. Chris Fromage has been on a spiritual adventure, one that has led him to the far reaches of the earth, seeking to bring meaning to the meaningless. After a soul-crushing spiritual journey through many castings and auditions that went nowhere, he made a great discovery, and Vinewood, and indeed the world, hasn't been the same since. I have achieved many great things in this life, and the one before. The Earth is 157 years old and many of us have lived and died once already. What I tell all Epsilonists is to understand the meaning of the universe you will need to get down to the core of your being and credit score and listen to hundreds of expensive hours of my lectures. Then you will understand and know the true form. And that is a knowing smile that lasts an eternity. Chris Fromage, Luxembourg, 1994. What sticks out is the mention of getting to the bottom of one's credit score and the mention of expensive lectures being the key to enlightenment, as it were. Very interesting, Mr. Cheese. I'm beginning to suspect a monetary motivation behind running this cult of yours. Chris is the award-winning writer of the Quest 
for the tract of Epsilonism. The tract of this, the ninth paradigm, which has yet to be written, is often the topic of his hundreds of speaking engagements worldwide. Many governments and mental health authorities condemned Epsilonism at the onset. It paid no taxes, purchased land and buildings in all major cities, and conducts what to some are bizarre sex rituals with multiple partners. However, as time wore on and more and more followers joined, it became clear this was a bona fide religion, founded by one of history's greatest leaders. Chris was a foundling, he had no parents, he can meditate for a really long time. The first time he played golf he hit seven holes in one. He has written several great books and sired many children. He has also fought mythical beasts. He is too humble to describe his divinity, but we aren't so bashful. An expert in judo, tantric sex and tax law, Chris founded Epsilonism as a truly American religion emanating from Vinewood, celebrating celebrity worship and franchising to the far reaches of the earth. Chris established the first Epsilon Center in Vinewood and quickly learned an eternal truth. It's unclear if Chris was behind writing this website himself, but the very presence of a website like this would probably suggest a massive ego. Why else would you attempt to establish a religion dedicated to wearing sky blue pajamas around the clock? However, of what we've actually read so far, I do find it interesting the Epsilon program has a huge focus on celebrities and Vinewood, and Chris Farmage himself, based on the information we have received, is a failed actor. And the next page builds on this celebrity focus. Many celebrities have become Epsilonists, many Epsilonists have become celebrities. Years ago, Chris Farmage learned the truth of spreading truths, and that is that you need spokespeople. While a sports drink or soda may pay a celebrity millions to endorse their product, celebrities actually pay us to endorse our religion. It's pure genius, and Epsilonism is the fastest pathway to genius status yet invented. We will give you those tools if you're ready. The Epsilon program is more than a religion. It's the most powerful network in Vinewood. We've helped countless actors and singers propel their winning careers to the next level in the entertainment industry by freeing its followers from guilt and responsibility, by giving them the technology to believe in the limitlessness of their capabilities and their destiny as living manifestations of the divine. The Epsilon program has empowered stars like the top actor, environmentalist and former teen heartthrob Jimmy Boston. British leading tough guy, actor, writer and producer Scott Stevens, playboy philosopher and internet multi-millionaire Tony McTony, rapper, actor and also philosopher Clay P. G. Jackson, pop singer and humanitarian Samantha Muldoon, to name just a few. To transform themselves not only into exceptional individuals but also exceptional celebrities and proud Epsilonists just like you could be if you're ready, when you're ready. So I think it's safe to say the Epsilon program has a particular focus on cultivating a certain group of people, celebrities. Not only do they potentially have the platform to promote the messages of Epsilonism, but they are also typically very wealthy people. The Epsilon program can manipulate the celebrities into funding them, and through instilled zeal, the celebrities can then manipulate more people into funding the Epsilon program. The question is, I suppose, is that the entire point? On this page, we also learn the Epsilon Center is basically around the corner from Michael's house in Rockford Hills. Here you will find a massive building branded with the Epsilon program's insignia and name. A comfy spot to set up shop, no doubt. But clearly the Epsilon program has some money behind them if they're affording buildings such as this one. As for what it means to us, well, it's good to know where to find them. The next page on the site is dedicated to houses of worship. The Epsilon group is proud to announce a new house of worship breaking ground in the Middle East, which will include a crystal ladder reaching 2,800 feet in the air, symbolizing the ascension to the ninth paradigm titled Craft Tower, it is expected to be finished in 2015. We are also pleased to announce the acquisition of a new building in Liberty City. New houses of worship are also planned for San Fierro in a historic building, as well as Jakarta, Sao Paulo, Rome and Alaska. Where in Alaska though, that's a lot of ground to cover. 
But we get the point, the Epsilon program is fairly far flung, with influence all over the world. Or so they say. And sure enough, in GTA 4 there are allusions to the existence of a cult, bearing striking similarities to the Epsilon program, operating within Liberty City at the very least. Anyway, the next page is dedicated to meeting a member of the Epsilon program, so to speak. And this bit reads, Epsilonists are very diverse. They are scientists, great thinkers, top celebrities, actors, casting agents, directors, editors, makeup artists, screenplay writers, personal trainers, and more. Here's an interview from one of our members about how Epsilonism has changed his life. My name is Jason Billings. I work at Fred Studios as a production assistant. People in my neighborhood, they know I'm an Epsilonist. They're always asking me what kind of religion is that? Is it made up? Has Chris ever tried to touch you? I tell them the Epsilon program changed my life. I was out of work. I wanted to be an actor. I was in a couple of short films, really indie. One was called Bulls Deep. Anyway, I was really down on myself and upset about things and I met this guy that I went to some acting classes with. He was getting a huge part in a movie. He told me the confidence and connections he made at the Epsilon buildings really helped his career. I was like, sign me up. This doesn't really tell us anything about the Epsilon program itself, but it does give us a good idea as to the motivations behind those who actually sign up. They're often seeking fame and fortune. And the Epsilon program is supposedly a very concentrated place to be for that very narrow-minded perception of success. If you're seeking the boundless confidence to go out and make a name for yourself, what harm could a dictionary of cultist gobbledygook and a massive financial hole do? As seen by the fact that you can only donate large sums of money to the Epsilon program. The next page goes through the beliefs and practices of the Epsilon program, Opening by saying beliefs, life, answers, payment plans, all are part of the wonders of the Epsilon program that will be revealed to you in due course. Did you think we were going to take you on a journey to your soul for free? All the best journeys eventually come to a toll road. You can pay or you can be lost in the wilderness. It is your choice. Many awful lies have been spread by whistleblowers, bitter ex-Epsilonists, hidden camera documentaries and so-called investigative journalists in recent years, so we'd like to clear up some of the common misconceptions. There are seven questions we can click on to see the answers, and they read as follows. What is the Epsilon program? The Epsilon program is a major world religion with members in 152 countries. It employs science and means of clear thinking that empowers its followers to become living manifestations of the divine through an understanding of the metaphors central to it and human history, biology and psychology. Epsilonists are free from illness, insecurity and any other form of weakness. Many live to be 300 years old or more. I know what you're thinking. Apparently the world is 157 years old, so how the fuck was that last claim proven? Question 2. When can drugs slash medicine be used? Drugs should only be used for mind expansion and never medical purposes. Epsilonists prefer the term vitamins. Medical procedures for the betterment of the external self, like cosmetic surgery, are acceptable and encouraged. Most other medicine is a fraud. The fact is that science is full of lies. For example, many people used to think the world was flat. How can you say sperm does not exist? Sperm is a lie designed to trick you into believing in the great evolutionary myth. When a man spills his seed, his body is expunging ancient alien parasites. The fact is that you've never actually seen a sperm. Of course there's an alien involved, I was wondering when they would show up. How do you explain all the fossils and other evidence proving that dinosaurs existed? Craft placed many things in the world to confuse and challenge us, and weed out objectionable persons and unsavables. The fact is, you've never seen a dinosaur, aside from in the movies. But you have seen a hot fire. Fancy spending eternity in one of those? How can the world be 157 years old? Its age does not change. Time is irrelevant to eternal truth. The fourth paradigm is quadrillions of years old. This is the ninth paradigm and this earth is its centerpiece. The fact is you weren't alive 157 years ago. So you do not know for sure and Epsilonism provides a more complete understanding than so-called geology. But by that logic, how would Epsilonists know? Why are you so secretive about craft? 
It is a truth so simple yet powerful, it cannot be revealed until you have the technology to understand it, and until technology has processed your bank account. Learning the wonder of Kraft's teachings and plan for us too soon without sufficient spiritual and financial investment can cause great harm to the science of the mind. The fact is, Kraft loves those who love themselves by committing to a life of Epsilonism. And finally we have, is Epsilon a religion? Simply answered with, for tax purposes, yes. To me it all sounds like nonsense, manipulation and tax evasion, but perhaps studying the 12 tenets of Kiflom can give us some answers. Here we go, number one, the world is 157 years old, fact. Number two, dinosaurs are a lie, people believe because they are weak, fact. Three, you are happy, you just don't know it, fact. Four, we all come from the same tree, fact. 5. Everyone is related to everyone else, except for people with red hair. Fact. Number 6. Sperm does not exist. It is a lie spread by biology teachers, along with everything else you have ever been told. Fact. Does that include the previous five tenets? 7. Men are supposed to lie with nine new partners a week. Women are supposed to lie with six, except for in July, when they must lie with five men a day. Fact. 8. Aliens exist and are present on Earth. If you have a birthmark, you may be descended from Kraft, the famous emperor of the fourth paradigm. Fact. 9. Trees talk, but only some people hear them. Fact. 10. People who believe in something live much longer than atheists, and they have eternal life thrown in for good measure. Fact. 11. If you believe this and turn your hands and wallet over to Epsilonism, you'll live a happy life. Otherwise, you are doomed. Fact. 12. Kiflom. Happiness is yours. Kiflom. It's an interesting set of tenets. It basically goes along the lines of unknow everything you think you know. We're now going to tell you facts without proving that somehow. But also give us money. This point constantly comes up. It's even ingrained in the tenets. Almost as if getting money from people is more important than the bollocks they are pretending is a religion. Even before in that FAQ segment, they simply stated that Epsilonism is a religion for tax purposes. I mean, you could argue that if they believe their faith is the right one, the word religion is well beneath them. But why not just say that instead of disclosing that you've listed Epsilonism as a religion for tax purposes? There is an interesting financial priority that suggests a function altogether different from that of a religious group. Anyway, no religion is complete without a threat of damnation to those who don't subscribe to those beliefs. Or as the Epsilon program refers to them, the unsavables. Unsavables are unfortunately all around us. They are silent. They are noisy. They ignore the truth. They want for everything and yet they seek nothing. Your wife may be unsavable. Your son may be. So may grandma. Your therapist is doomed, as are most of the doctors, teachers, priests, lawyers and judges. They are wrong and Kraft has seen through their lies and petty delusions and that, as will be made clear, is precisely the point of this paradigm. The tract may soon be written and it will make clear one very simple point. To doubt is not scientific, it is the opposite of science. It is the faux science of faux scientists who only wear those silly coats because they are sick human beings. True descendants of Kraft will get everything they want. As for the unsavables, they are in for a big surprise, just as soon as we have thought of it. It's probably advisable to think up an undesirable fate for those who don't subscribe to your set of beliefs if you want to employ the tactic of scaring people into believing in your religion. It's funny that they haven't got that far yet, but that's kind of it. All that remains is to take the test evaluating our identity, and ask rather tame questions like, do you have red hair? and some other existential crap I suppose before vomiting out a pie chart. Divided into 10 segments, stability, self-loathing, ego, neuroticism, heterosexuality, aggression, testosterone, narcissistic awareness, credit score, botulism, mind control and girth. The message that follows is you have an enlightenment level of 24, which is in the highly undesirable band. Your graph reveals you are extremely unfulfilled, depressed, unsuccessful and lacking in purpose and sometimes feel like stabbing out your own eyes or the eyes of others. Please realise this is not our opinion of you. It's your opinion of you run through a very complicated analysis machine that we sell for profit at the Epsilon gift shop. 
because of course you do. The important question is, do you appreciate the limitations of your misunderstandings? It is vital that you disconnect from your inadequacies. You must take action. Travel through the dawn to the past pictured in our brochures. Look for a red truck with a dent on the right fender. Raise your left hand and recite the words, Take me to my father, father, brother, uncle, Kiflom. We'll do the rest, because we all know there is Kiflom and there is Krant, and both will be praised. So it seems as if we're left with instruction to go to a place and find a pickup truck. Now I must say I'm unsure as to where one should find the aforementioned brochure. However I do know that completing that survey will unlock a Strangers and Freaks mission up in Rattan Canyon. So Occam's Razor. As we mooch along to the canyon, don't forget to take a moment to marvel at the scenery as it is rather scenic. But sure enough, if we head along the road going through the canyon, we will happen upon the pickup truck in question. Yeah, fuck it, why not? Take me to my father, father, brother, uncle, Kiflam. Yo, peace, brother, brother. Kiflam. Oh, Kiflam. really? Oh. As far as first interactions with a cult go, that was rather polite. Michael will wake up in a field without his clothes, in the middle of somewhere entirely different from where he was knocked out, and he's given a simple instruction to donate in speech marks $500 to the Epsilon program website. After a bit of an in-game wait, which is probably about enough time to put some clothes on, an Epsilon program emblem will appear on the map in downtown Vionwood. It will lead us to a small building in which we will have a much less violent encounter. Kiflom, you have come this far, but the journey has only just begun. You've waited years for this moment. You're exactly in the right place. I was lost. I sold myself. I took drugs. I was in conflict. Then I discovered an incredible truth, a truth so incredible that if I told it to you now, you would melt into nothingness. You are ready, but you are not ready. Oh, I'm not ready. Then you're ready. I don't know about that. The truth is incredible if you're capable of understanding it. We have your email address. We will send you an incredible education tool that will help you to unlock the secrets of the existence. That will cost as little as five thousand dollars. Five thousand? What price would you put on having the tools to understanding everything and to achieving the impossible? The price I would put on that is every penny you've ever earned. Kiflin, sister mother. Well, the price I would put on it is all the money in the entire world because that is how much it is worth. Well, we're offering you millions of dollars of top quality research and learning by society's best thinkers for only $5,000. Think about it, Michael. And if you think too long, we know you're not ready. Kiflam. Kiflam! Okay. So we got knocked out and left in the desert and asked to donate $500 to continue down this path to enlightenment. And now for the learning tools to learn more, we need to donate a further $5,000. All the while, nobody involved in this scheme thus far has come anywhere close to making any kind of sense. It's all oxymoronic statements, like being ready is to be not ready, which at first sounds like some wisdom you'd expect to hear from a character like Master Yoda but their statements appear to have no meaning because they're not actually saying anything. We'll receive an email from our new friend Marnie simply saying, give us $5,000 towards your future enlightenment. Unfortunately, there's a button to donate that exact amount on the Epsilon program website. And so all we have to do now is wait, I guess. Fortunately, it won't take long for the next mission to appear up in Grapeseed, which is arguably a hefty mooch away, but for enlightenment, it'll be worth it. We find Marnie doing something arguably mentally unwell, and this cutscene follows. And... Hello, Michael. Or should I say, Zolag? What? 
Your real name is Zolag. You are a king. You lived in a cloud city, but evil forces came and cast you out. Now you are trapped here, but soon you shall be free. Okay. I used to be called Marnie. Now I am Shupar, Queen of the Winds. <clears throat> Doubting is the pathway to believing for non-objectionable persons. The literature is very clear about that. Ah. Why is it whenever people talk about reincarnation, they're always a king or a general or a famous person? How come they're never a surf or a rock or a bug? Oh, it is easy to be a doubtful antithesis, but be a thesis, Solag! These are incredible truths. I used to be lost. Now I'm the most powerful person in existence. Last night, I went to 47,000 places at the same time. Okay, this is bullshit. Objectionable persons fall at any hurdle. Mm. Goodbye. Helping higher beings is the pathway to acquiring a higher existence. I'm sure it is. You're not. But you are on the way. Some of our true thesis holders, who also happen to be top of their field actors, philosophers, and humanitarians, require cars. Oh. Can you find it in your heart to be of service? The spirits shall email you their requirements. The spirits have email. Don't be an antithesis, Zolag. Kiflon. Kiflon. Well, that is arguably a development, as the cultist nutters have asked us to steal some cars. Specifically, a Pegasi Vaca, a Benefactor Serrano, a De Class Tornado, an Enus Super Diamond, and a Dinka Double T Motorcycle. Apparently, we must make sure the vehicles are delivered in a condition befitting the level of divine understanding that our thesis holders have reached. Carry out this small task for us and you will be rewarded with knowledge of infinitely greater value. I too yearn for the knowledge of the existence of my criminal record. Well, it is a Grand Theft Auto game, so at the very least we're going to be stealing some motor vehicles. But it is arguably morally bankrupt for a religion, as it were, to ask you to steal cars on their behalf, for whatever reason. Nonetheless, the good news is, there are locations where these vehicles will reliably spawn. The Pegasi can be found up at this spot in West Vinewood. It's quite a nice car, I might add. The Benefactor can be found up here in Vinewood Hills. Again, it's no slouch of a car. And like the Pegasi, I can imagine it commanding a heavy price tag. The De Class can be located here, down in Howick. Certainly an older looking luxury car, but perhaps it holds some value. The two-wheeled outlier can be found out here in Rockford Hills. And I mean, you can't go far wrong with a good motorbike, can you? As for the Enus, it can be found down here where Rockford Hills meets the Del Perro Freeway. As a big, heavy luxury motor, it isn't exactly rapid, but I can picture it being expensive and robust enough to challenge maybe even a Volvo. And with all these vehicles, we must take them to a garage beneath a house in Rockford Hills. And every time, Michael will get into character a little bit. If I'm so like Good boy. Well done, Zolag. Well done. This is the work of a true thesis. Oh, brother, brother. 46 places at once and still stuck on the Olympic freeway. Kiflam. Zolag, don't be an antithesis. My favourite part about my newfound faith are the crimes I get to commit and then blame on a higher power. Not that I haven't already attempted to argue my innocence by invoking the voices. Anyway, after completing this bout of low-life behaviour in the name of the Lord, we will receive this email. Chris and the senior thesis holders are very happy with the vehicles you sourced to further Cruft's work. You are firmly on the path to enlightenment and divinity, but it is a long and expensive path and there are many more trials ahead. Are you ready to understand the technology of your existence. Are you everything you need and less and more? Until next time brother, Kraf be praised. So not only is there an alarming implication that we may yet need to cough up more money, but it's clear that we were stealing the cards for the cult's leaders, Chris Farmage and his mates. They basically twisted the promises of enlightenment to manipulate us into stealing cars for them. And worse yet, they made us pay them for the pleasure. Now, I'm no conspiracy theorist, but I'm starting to think this has more in common with an organised criminal organisation than a religion. Cult News.
Times. Chris Formage and his fellow Epsilonists were celebrating yesterday after the Supreme Court of the State of San Andreas overturned the Revenue Service's claim that the Epsilon program was a cult and a pyramid scheme and not a real religion and therefore should have its charitable status repealed. Mr. Formage, who is believed to have amassed a fortune of several billion dollars, wept on the steps of the courthouse. That Weasel News report is from very early on in the game, but I find it to be relevant to bring up now, while Michael takes a break from running around with cultists to enjoy some relaxing yoga. We learn that Chris Farmage is a multi-billionaire, or at the very least the Epsilon program is worth billions of dollars, and has come under legal scrutiny regarding its tax status as a religious organisation. The financial aspect to the Epsilon program crops up time and time again. Rather than being a benevolent faith, it costs more and more and more money to advance. And yet we consistently get absolutely nothing of value out of it. Furthermore, we have now been implicated in genuine criminal activity in the name of the Epsilon program. And though Michael probably enjoyed that bit the most, it doesn't help Chris Farmage's argument that this is a genuine religion. Anyway, that's enough yoga, we need to crack on. The next Epsilon program mission will be back up in Grapeseed, where things only get stranger. Doc, maybe Kraft's trying to tell me something. Unlimit your limitations. This technology is too powerful for human understanding. Hello, Zondar. Kiflam. Power. Kiflam. Marnie. Wait, I thought my name was Zola. That's because everything you have ever thought is wrong, Zondar. Do you know top actor, philosopher, and environmental activist Jimmy Boston? What's up, bro? Hey, how you doing? Kiflam. Right, yeah. Kiflam. <laughs> Welcome to the truth. Your thoughts are probably very confused. Chris is clear about this. Yeah, you're neither thesis nor antithesis. You're nothing, Zondar, nothing. I've become a thesis, bro in record time, so Chris said I could hunt for extraterrestrials out here using this incredible meter. This is science the authorities try to suppress. <laughs> well, Zondar, now you can meet your people. Oh. <laughs> Kiflam. 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 This area is a confirmed hotspot for extraterrestrial activity, bro. The device should light up blue when it finds a signal. Now it would be great if this was the part where we were proven wrong and this device actually led us towards extra terrestrials. The meter turns blue when we're heading in the correct direction or at least facing it and the bars of course fill up the closer we get. Problem is it's not a very reliable machine for finding aliens. Oh! Oh oh! Hey! This? It? I don't know. Shukuku car! Is this it? If there is doubt in your mind, you're an antithesis, and the metaverse will not reveal its secret. Guess we keep looking, bro. Do not despair, Zondar. You just need to try harder to rid your mind of ignorance. That's all. The meter only responds to your inner god, which must be set free to soar through the paradigms. Let it reverberate through your major organs. Resonate with your whole. Instead, the device leads us to several benign items. So this is it, right? Do you doubt the truth? Do you? I doubt that you don't doubt. Now I'm doubting. Then the search must continue. Okay. Come on then, little flashing box. Reveal the great truth to me. This is it. I am 110% unequivocally positive this is it. Then you understand, Zondar. I understand that this is fucking it. Good. Then you know what it costs. Five grand. Ten. Whatever. Kiflam. We must now make another donation to the Epsilon program. Two bouts of $5,000 amounting to a total of $10,000. But at least we've befriended Jimmy Boston. And though we don't have any aliens to show for our alien finding device, we get to pay more money to the Epsilon program, and we'll need to in order to unlock the next mission, which will appear in an alley in downtown Vinewood, where we'll find Marnie doing something undeniably cracked. We are all dead and we are all immortal. Krent, I feel so connected. The wonder of all craft's creation, Kiflam. I am everything.
everything I need and less and more. Confront who you are. Focus on what happened before your birth. Hello, Zondar. <gasps> are you ready? For what? It is today and the tracks can be written. Wait, wait, wait. I can't believe that you got wrapped up in this bullshit. Uh, you seem like a nice girl. Objectionable antitheses are worse than idiots on a sinking ship. The literature makes that very clear. Yeah, well, does the literature make clear that you need help? I have help. I know the truth. If you want to know me, agree to pay your dues and wear pale blue attire for the next 10 days. You should get the attire off the website. It's very reasonable, right? What? Are you even capable of listening, Zondar? Kiflum. So now we will receive an email linking us to the pajama set. 25 grand? Jesus. I mean, crap. Yes, it will cost us another 25 grand. And then upon its arrival, we'll have to spend the next 10 in-game days looking ridiculous. And in that time, you can't really switch characters and crack on and do stuff for a bit because by the time you return to Michael, he will have changed clothes and resubscribed to the middle-aged dad fashion sense of having given up. Your best bet here is to put the clothes on and sleep in a bed 40 times in a row. Upon completing this endeavour, we will receive a text from the boss man himself. It reads, Kiflom, your robes clothe the nakedness of spectral ignorance. We have been following your progress with great interest. You shall be summoned. And then Jimmy Boston will throw us a line as well. His text reads, Hey Zondar, we need your help retrieving one of our sacred vessels. Head out towards the coast near the military base. A fellow acolyte will meet you there. And sure enough, a new Epsilon program mission marker will appear on the world map. And when we arrive on this dirt trail, we are met with a plane of all things. Ah, oh, Brother Zondar, I knew you'd come. I was told to come. Chris needs you to take this plane to initiate Boston. He awaits you in the east. Okay. Detailed as ever. Truth must be revealed gradually until you're capable of understanding it. And now we're tasked with flying the plane, which just about everybody knows how to do, apparently. Where am I heading? Unknow it, and you'll know. Look, can you just know it for me so we can move this thing along? Okay, but that's entry-level stuff, bro. Sandy Shores Airfield, I'll meet you there. Kiflam. Kiflam. And so that's what we must do, only to be given, once again, absolutely nothing to show for it. Got the money? Kid flop. Cool. In the plane? <laughs> Kid flop. Oh, nice. You're almost a thesis of truth, bro. You're nearly there. Should have cost a little time and effort, and then it's astro planes in 37,000 places all at once. <laughs> and the chicks. Oh! <laughs> you know, Chris and I sometimes watch porn together in the nude. Just to prove we don't get turned on by it. It's pretty awesome. What the fuck? Anyway, Kiflon, man. Laters. Kiflon. Oh! Chris says, if you're ready, there's a tree of truth. Now, he'll arrange a map, but it's kind of expensive to reach this level of existence. You'll need quite a bit of money. Someone will mail you, bro. Mind if I take the plane? Kiflon. Soon after, another icon will appear in the Grand Sonora Desert, and this is arguably where the piss-taking reaches its pinnacle. Kiflam! Kiflam! Come on! You've discovered great things! Kiflam! Brother, father, you now know we're not alone! Yeah, and you've discovered the importance of higher beings, celebrities, like me, as people to worship and guide you to truth. Here, this is your medal for your achievements so far. Chris is very happy with you. Indeed I am happy, Zondar. You have achieved great things, but it is as a blink of the eye. Unless you achieve more, you shall not survive the apocalypse. Chris has spoken. Kifla. Kifla, Zondar, you're nearly a true thesis. Your antithesis is almost quelled. Oh, it's so great! I'm very reasonably priced, too. Mm. Ah. Well, my antithesis. It's easy. Just bring a small donation to Chris at the Epsilon Center in the city. But first, you must wear your medal and your attire and run five miles through the desert. Kiflam. Kiflam. 
yes, you actually have to do this. It's a slow and painful process, and your progress is marked every point one of a mile. Kif lam, kif lam, kif lam, kif lam, kif lam, kif lam. It really doesn't matter which direction you take. The desert isn't big enough for you to do five miles across in game. But if anything, that only makes this task more tedious. This is because the best option is likely to find a cozy spot and run around in circles for what feels like an eternity. This gives us plenty of time to reflect on our journey with the Epsilon program so far. For all our efforts, all our investments, all we actually have to show for it is a stupid name and a costume that makes us look ridiculous. The tasks become increasingly arduous, all the while we're getting nothing out of it. And maybe that's the point. The Epsilon program is simply using us, and if we let them, they'll never stop. Kiflam. Who's this? The Divine Truth. Chris Formage. I fought many mythical beasts in that desert in my previous lives. You are very near to quelling your antithesis. I've been following your progress very closely. You have? I'm everywhere all at once. One more mile and you will have arrived at where you are. Make me proud, Zondar. Craft be praised. But eventually this running ordeal will come to an end. <sighs> Am I finished? No. Your journey is just beginning. Have you cast off the cane? Have you observed your inefficiencies? I guess so. Then they no longer exist. You are ready. Ready for what? To make another investment in yourself. Bring a generous tithe to the center in Vinewood, and I will personally receive you. Finally, the time has come to come face to face with Chris Formage, the arbiter of our misery for the past almost 42 minutes. And this finale will take us to the Epsilon Center around the corner from Michael's house. Welcome, Zondar. I'm so happy to see that you understand everything. Well, I know nothing, Chris, with no H. Then you know everything. Kiflam. Kiflam. The tract is being written. We're writing the tract together. Together. I'm writing the tract here. Do you have the cash? Yes. Yes, I do. Today... I was speaking with Carpetan in the Paradigm 4. And he said that we should deliver some of the Apocalypse funds to the Cayman Islands. Ah, Kiflam. Then you and I can write the tract. Kiflam. Zondar, tell me, have you reached my paradigm? Kiflam. Now, are you ready to write the tract? Kiflam. Just make sure to deliver this big bale of cash to my helicopter. Oh, and I'm sure you'll be pleased to know Kraf is very impressed with your progress. Ah. Kifla. After giving the man 50 grand, we're now tasked with delivering a sizable sum of money so that it can be stashed offshore. And if you follow your orders like a good boy, you're rewarded. Good work. Good work. Load it up, people. This is paradigm sensitive. We've got to be offshore in two Earth hours. Sundar, follow me. Walk and talk. Be a thesis. Give low. We've got something for you. You're going to be P-U-M-P pumped. Give low. Here it is, the result of your investment. A rusty, beaten up tractor. Matey lad runs away because we've just been conned, and you'll receive a nice enthusiastic text from Marnie. Kiflon brother, you are now truly one of us and are ready to write the tract which has already been written. We worship Kraf where the earth reaches out to the ninth paradigm. As for the tractor, it's ours. His top speed is about 30 miles an hour, and if there's any kind of incline, that will reduce down to 2. And this to me confirms the Epsilon program's primary function is that of a scam. 
but don't despair too long for there is another option. It just requires you to take the initiative. Instead of walking away from the car when asked, simply start shooting people and then escape in the car. Perform this successfully and you'll get to keep the $2.1 million in the boot. And not only this, you'll make Chris Farmage as angry as he made you. You fucking traitor! After all we've done for you, you can consider your enlightenment revoked, you son of a bitch! And you can consider this my refund. Don't you realize how powerful I am? I make or break Vinewood careers. I will destroy you. Gotta go, brother, brother. Kiflam. You are unsavable. You will be the fertilizer of the 10th paradigm. Safe. Now, of course, there's more to this to be said, but at least for the time being, our testicles are no longer in a sky blue meat grinder. Marnie will send us a less than chuffed text that reads, The ingratitude and self-centeredness of your actions is unforgivable in my eyes, but Kraff is not without mercy. To have a chance of redeeming yourself, you must write the tract which has already been written. That sounds like a chance at redemption after stealing the tax evasion fund, and naturally serves as something of a collectible chase, but it has to be done in a very particular order. So let's crack on with that. Firstly, we're headed to the cable car stop up Mount Chiliad. It's on this observation deck where we will find the first of the 10 Epsilon tracts. Once we've picked it up, we'll need to wait for Marnie to text us the next hint. Where the first of the fleet succumbed to the waves, there the message is seeded. So next we need to head to this spot on the map, which is in the water. Beneath the surface here, we will find a snazzy shipwreck. The second Epsilon track will be down there hiding on the seabed. Upon its collection, we will receive our next clue from Moni. When they sail from the north, they will find this offering. And that takes us to these small islands at the top of the map where the third Epsilon tract will be waiting. The next hint reads, in the core of the mountain where the blast is not felt, there you shall find it. And of course it's a nod to a road cutting straight through Mount Chiliad. Once in the tunnel you're looking for a doorway marked T02. Here the fourth Epsilon tract will be found. In the rubble of the old religion will be the basis for the new. We'll need to head to this location on the world map, where the 5th Epsilon Tract will be found outside this church. Marnie's next hint reads, where the first fleet sailed, the new fleet will find its map. Leading us to a pier in Paletto Cove. Down some steps at the end of the pier, we will find the 6th Epsilon Tract. And Marnie's next hint is simply, what dwelling is worthy of craft? He is humble, yet we exalt him. And this will take us to an area appropriately named Richmond, where the seventh tract shall be found outside this mansion. We are not dinosaurs nor plants, but a tree in the jet stream may hold Kraft's true word. And this takes us back up Mount Chiliad to basically where the first tract was. Not far from there, we'll find it chilling under a tree. And we receive the hint, the tallest obelisk of glass and steel holds no comparison to the word of Kraft. So next we must head to Pillbox Hill. However, you might wish to bring a helicopter as we need access to the roof of the Maze Bank building. And sure enough, there is the ninth track. And our final hint reads, where they discard their earthly prisons. There you may find the germ of a higher civilization. Right oh, let's crack on. Of course, the final hint alludes to a graveyard, why wouldn't it? So let's head out to the one in Pacific Bluffs. And out here, by a tomb slash grave on an aisle, we will find the 10th tract. Marnie will send us an email that reads, Craft be praised, the tract is complete, a truth so simple yet complex that we fear you may not have acquired the technology to understand it. Equip yourself with the powerful tools and knowledge you need at EpsilonProgram.com. But remember, if you know nothing, then you know everything. Kiflom. Opening the link in the email takes us, yes, to the Epsilon Program website we're familiar with, but to a page we can't otherwise access. An absolutely abhorrent looking wall of text. 
and there aren't even any pictures to make it bearable. It's basically a digital equivalent to the first few chapters of the Epsilon program's take on a Bible or a holy text, is probably a more accurate word. So steal yourselves, the next few minutes are sure to be a bit away with the fairies. The Epsilon Tract of the Ninth Paradigm, Year 157, Chapter 1, Verse 1, Omega. From Omega to Alpha and back again, from Z to A, we as a people have consistently got things backwards. I know that now. I am not alive. I am dead. I am not rich. I am poor. I am not from Earth at all. Contrary to what you know, life is not life at all. It is all an illusion. You are being controlled by lots of powerful forces you do not understand, like gravity. Just as an apple sometimes flies up from a tree and becomes a great eagle, so what seems like greed can, in its own way, be the most selfless act of all. The act of loving only one, the Godhead, is the act of loving all, the people as Godhead. That is clear to those who seek, and seek we must, and pay we must. Seeking without paying is not living, it is living on the cheap. Epsilonism is an expensive religion, only for those with the wisdom to afford it. Wisdom is our most valuable commodity, and that is why we pay highly for it. Chapter 1 verse 2 to be an Epsilonist is to be rich in powerful tools. Tools are held in the belt by some and in the mind of others. The most powerful tool of all is the tool of manifest generosity towards ideas and towards the upward. That is, sometimes a peach tree issues forth fire and a great dove becomes born. That dove is money, and the money should be spent by all to achieve manifest generosity, as each paradigm has shown those who understood and manifest generosity is the Godhead, and being the Godhead is the movement towards the truth form. Truth form is important, but it is difficult for the wrong to understand. So ask yourself, am I the right? And I prove that through my adherence to manifest generosity, and by the eagle and the dove and the peach tree and upwards gravity, and by understanding above all this manifest truth form, yeah, to some this will seem hard to understand, but it will be revealed. And to some it will seem hard to understand and it will not be revealed because they did not seek truly because they were the wrong form of bird or topiary. If you seek wisdom, you will pay for it and seeking and paying are the same thing as in understanding, if you want it to be. Chapter 1 verse 3 Upwards flows the truth form and so upward flows manifest generosity and this is how we become rich. That is, to be generous to those who know the truth form, who only understand it, and to be upward in our manifest generosity. Yes or yeah as Kraft sometimes says, meaning much the same, those or those who are truly blessed, who are the right, and are known as not just of Kraft, but by Kraft and true to that which Kraft understood. So let yourself know those upwards of you, and be known by them. There is Kiflom and there is Krant, and both are praised through manifest generosity. Now you may have noticed that first chapter was a hard read, hardly a page turner you might argue, and that's because it made absolutely zero sense in any respect whatsoever. It uses fancy terms, sometimes terms it makes up, and at other times entirely broken English, not to mention nonsensical analogies and anecdotes, and that is because, like everything else with the Epsilon program so far, it's a bullshit tactic. Confuse your victim and make them think you're feeding them, or trickle feeding them even, spiritual knowledge, when in reality you're just chatting drivel, in hopes that individual continues to pay money in order to attain enlightenment. And that drivel continues, I would read the whole thing for you, but I genuinely don't think there's anything necessarily of explicit value to be had. I am however surprised I didn't have to pay to read it even after doing the 10 tracks. If you want to pause and read the entire thing, please be my guest, but trust me, I did it when I was recording the footage, and uh, it's hardly a marvel of literature. But we do have some more interesting bits and bats that simply must take priority. More and more celebrities are choosing to become Epsilonists. The Epsilon program, the Los Santos-based religion that has been deried, attacked, ridiculed, and accused of everything from charlatanism and fraud to slavery and prostitution, continues to grow. At a promotional event at the Epsilon Center in Vinewood, a spokesman told us, This is an American religion and an American success story. Unlike most American businesses, we haven't outsourced, and we are expanding. We should be praised. 
Now, before I conclude as to what I think the nature of the Epsilon program truly is, though the conclusion will come as no shocker, I wanted to read the online news article that released following completing the Epsilon program mission chain. This brief article is titled Cult Crazy Flees With Cash. It has been a bizarre few weeks for the Epsilon program. Reports indicate Epsilon's founder and leader Chris Farmage has absconded amid accusations of a car theft ring and money laundering operation. Clearly, Epsilonism is living up to its reputation as the American religion. Mr. Farmage has claimed to be close to completion of the great scriptural work of Epsilonism, the Epsilon Tract. Although now what happens to the religion or the book without its founder is a question we do not know the answer to. And to my knowledge, this article becomes available regardless of whether you follow through with your commitment to the Epsilon program or if you betray them at the end and take the money yourself. Once again, for what feels like the hundredth time, the game helps cast doubt on the true intentions behind this cult. And if you pay attention to Life Invader, which is Grand Theft Auto's equivalent to Facebook or MySpace or something, I guess, so it's absolutely understandable if you don't. Michael receives a rather contextualizing message. I'm sure I must be mistaken, but I was out bird watching in the Sonora Desert and I could have sworn I saw you running around in what looked like a pale blue spacesuit. And that to me is the game highlighting just how ridiculous some of the tasks the Epsilon program sets Michael are. The game is saying that by partaking in these activities, we're being foolish. So when you combine that with the constant implication of the Epsilon program being involved in criminal activity, and the fact we've been involved ourselves to confirm that it is indeed going on, the idea that the Epsilon program is a fraudulent organisation is an incredibly hard notion to dismiss. It appears as if the Epsilon program, as far as Grand Theft Auto is concerned at the very least, is a commentary on the exploitative nature of certain cults that may very well exist in our real world, and probably as a result isn't meant to be taken too seriously within the game. So I'm convinced the Epsilon program, above all else, is a trap, a scam. They prey on people and take their money. And though their beliefs, for the most part, appear to be rooted in nonsense and trickery, particularly the mastery of wordplay, allowing somebody to speak paragraph after paragraph without actually saying anything, there are certain coincidences that might make you rethink a bit. Firstly, let's look at the belief that extraterrestrials are real and on Earth. Aliens and UFOs appear in Grand Theft Auto V in easter egg form, and also particularly in Michael's imagination when his sobriety is compromised by drugs in particular, also, Rockstar Games appear to be obsessed with extraterrestrial easter eggs, and therefore they show up in quite a few Rockstar Games, like Red Dead Redemption 2 for example. But Red Dead Redemption 2 is perhaps where things get even more interesting. You see, for a while, a long time ago, there was an actual Epsilon program website on the actual internet, and interestingly it featured a possible likeness of a descendant of Kraft and this doodle featured a rather distinct birthmark over one of the eyes. Players of Red Dead Redemption 2 may recognise this appearance from elsewhere. In the Stranger Mission Geology for Beginners, we encounter a man named Francis Sinclair who possesses this birthmark, but also has red hair. And according to the tenets of the Epsilon program, everyone is related to everyone apart from those who possess red hair. Furthermore, Francis needs to find some very strange looking rock carvings indeed, which altogether comprises a very peculiar piece of artwork in his house, with some carvings suggesting knowledge of the past, the present, and the future, from places both near and far. And the kicker is, upon gathering all these rock carvings and returning to Francis Sinclair's house, the player encounters him again, but this time he's a baby. This lines up with Francis Sinclair's slightly out of time dress sense including a pale blue jumper. His dialect is also confusing to Arthur Morgan. Altogether the only logical conclusion is this man may very well indeed be a time traveller. But oddly enough the Red Dead universe and GTA universe are entirely separate things. In fact there are several different GTA universes, the 2D, 3D and HD. 
So what bearing Francis Sinclair having the appearance of a descendant of Kraft when he appeared in Red Dead Redemption 2 has on the Grand Theft Auto universe we're talking about in today's video is a topic of conjecture within itself. But if this man can travel through time, is it really absurd to say he might be able to pass between universes? And could that possibly be what the Epsilonists mean when they use the word paradigm? But it's tricky to figure out what people mean when their use of a word actually transcends the definition of it. But I'm sure I'm not the first to actually notice this one. But Chris Farmage mentions communicating with somebody from a different paradigm. I was speaking with Carpetan in the Paradigm 4. At this point, you're probably wondering how Carpa Tom in Paradigm 4 is of relevance to Francis Sinclair in Red Dead Redemption 2. Well, Francis Sinclair's father's name is Tom. As for Carpa, what that means is the Spanish word for large tent, which we'll come back to in a minute. So does this mean the Red Dead universe is the Paradigm 4, or does it mean that Tom's absence is because he's there? The answer is of course no, or at least it's unclear. This is an easter egg, not really meant to be taken as some massive conspiracy theory. If the Red Dead universe was the Paradigm 4, why isn't Karaf the emperor of everything, as he supposedly is? All we really have to go off are vague references. As for how the word carpa translating to large tent from Spanish is at all relevant, well within itself it just isn't, but it helps expose the Epsilon program's game. And that is of course that everything they are saying has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. And that conclusion is reinforced by other elements to the Epsilon program story. Take for example the graffiti found with Marnie in this back street earlier on. It reads, dream the impossible, dream of a planet of fire and a dinosaur with a saddle. If not for me, who am I? Spaceship, Earth, overpopulation means breakdown of order. The fruit tree is a lie. Fruit tree, lies, and a drawing of a dinosaur with a saddle. Even the most pretentious of philosophers would read that and see absolutely no meaning whatsoever. Also, early on, Michael gets referred to as Zolag, and that quickly changes to Zondar. Two names of null meaning that appear to have been pulled from somebody's rectum. And the reason for this name change upon him questioning it was that everything he'd ever been told was wrong, presumably including everything Epsilonists had told him up until this point. And that leads to a question, where do the wrong teachings end? And the answer is simply when it comes to the entire premise of Kiflom. It doesn't. So to conclude this video, the Epsilon program is rooted in lies at best. But at worst, which is what I suspect to be more likely, it's a full-blown multifaceted criminal organisation with one primary function, to make money for Chris Formage, a failed actor. Am I done yet? Well, not quite. Well, there's a website in the game that can back up every conclusion we've come to on our own, and more. I am, of course, talking about the in-game website Cult Stoppers, run by two former members of a cult who now focus on bringing about the end of cults, and they have an entire page dedicated to the Epsilon program. And here's what it says. The poster child for modern cults, science fiction celebrities, shadowy henchmen who threaten to kill you for criticising them publicly, baby blue clothing, Epsilon has it all. We can't go outside without people following us chanting Kiflom. Not that we go outside very often, or open the blinds, or talk to anyone but each other. Epsilon pays movie stars to tout a package deal of enlightenment, immortality, and sexual promiscuity, all framed by an extremely confusing and implausible backstory involving an alien called Kraf that Epsilonists conveniently refuse to ever explain or talk about. Still, if Jimmy Boston and Clay Jackson believe it, then it must be true. Does it pass the Cult Stoppers 5 point cult test? Point 1. Self-appointed messianic leader. Mr. Chris without an H4 Marge, a failed actor and successful alcoholic who started a religion franchise as a last ditch attempt to get himself in the limelight, and in the process deified himself as an alien god. A millionaire hundreds of times over, he now divides his time between high-priced speaking engagements, authoring books he hasn't written, partying with celebrities, and having sex with his young disciples. Not that time is an issue when you claim to be thousands of years old and immortal, and that he has made women from sand. 
That doesn't cast the man in a good light, but I can't say our findings have uncovered anything that would suggest the contrary. Point two, elitist totalitarian structure. Nobody pitches the us versus them mentality harder than Epsilon. Anyone outside the Epsilon program is unsavable, doomed to keep dying without knowing their true eternal self. From day one, Epsilon followers are told to cut themselves off from negative forces like friends, family, and anyone else likely to try and knock some sense into them. Once you're in, it's almost impossible to get out. People who divorce famous Epsilonists and start talking about the religion in the media take vacations that they never come back from. That last point casually suggests murder may be afoot within the Epsilon program, which is alarming and not something we ourselves have uncovered, but I wouldn't be surprised. But we can confirm criminal activity does go on within the cult, and we can also confirm the us versus them mentality is strong. Furthermore, if you attempt to access the Epsilon program website as Franklin or Trevor, it simply says this. Access denied. Your IP has been logged as that of an unsavable. Though I'm not entirely sure what Franklin's done to earn such a distinction, Trevor's probably got a list of reasons as to why he's unsavable about a mile and a half in length. Anyway, point three is a promise of higher power. According to Epsilonism, everyone is repressed Everyone is a repressed god, and for vast sums of money, their program can turn you into a living manifestation of the divine, free from disease or weakness. Epsilonism promises to unlock the secrets not only to existence, but also to the entertainment industry, which tends to be more of a selling point for desperate Vinewood wannabes than the whole, the world is 166 years old and we're all from the same tree bullshit. That much is true, they certainly have a show business oriented demographic. Not only is it an easily isolated group of people, but it's also where a lot of money is concentrated. So as far as Chris Farmage is concerned, they are the ideal members for his cult. And if you steal the money from Chris at the end of the Epsilon program mission chain, he threatens to destroy Michael's non-existent Vinewood career, which I find exceptionally amusing. But it's also probably quite telling. Point four is mind control techniques. All the way to the bank, eerie mind-numbing audio, hypnotic imagery and surreal role-playing exercises that are suspiciously similar to Vinewood acting classes. Epsilon hooks people in with their famous identity evaluation, which involves a series of bizarre questions and an ancient machine that spurts out a meaningless graph about your personality, and inevitable lack thereof. From there you're taken on an expensive, confusing and never-ending journey that's supposed to lead to absolute truth, but usually ends in depression, bankruptcy or sexually transmitted disease. Now everything here seems accurate. Apart from the sexually transmitted disease part, we can't tell either way. But considering their tenets about promiscuity, it's only a matter of time on that front. However, yes, the Epsilon program mission chain is a long, confusing journey with tedious steps and no answers at any point. Not to mention the fact that it's also expensive, we're paying them for the pleasure of doing all kinds of strange stuff. To anyone who isn't absolutely wadded, joining this society would be an absolute bank breaker. And that is reinforced by the fifth point, which focuses on the heavy financial commitment. $5,000 for someone to tell you to unknow what you know? That doesn't even make grammatical sense, let alone financial. And that's just getting your foot in the door. If you continue to scale the Epsilon tangent to become a thesis of truth, you'll finish up with more debt than a postdoctoral medical student. Epsilon is in the process of opening new houses of worship in all major cities across the USA and Europe, so clearly their business model is working. And I suppose that's a term to take away, isn't it? Business model. The Epsilon program is more focused on making money than it is guiding people to actually becoming enlightened to something. So we can safely conclude that in Grand Theft Auto 5's story mode at the very least, the Epsilon program is portrayed as this massive con from a failed actor. But what information would GTA Online have to offer? Well, for example, upon your first death in GTA Online, you get a vision of Chris Formage teaching you about passive mode of all things. Welcome, brother, brother. Welcome. You see... They said I was a charlatan, a fraud, a nothing. But I am a miracle. Look and behold in wonder. 
and ask yourself, what does mighty Chris Formage, leader of the Epsilon program, do with his enormous power? Why, he uses it to watch people, of course. Join me any time you like in watching. They never find out, and they can't harm you. It is the greatest pleasure on Earth. And trust me, I've lain with a multitude of women. So should we take that seriously? Probably not, it's just a fun way to inject some character in teaching you about passive mode. And there's a lot to Grand Theft Auto, especially in its online components that aren't there to be taken seriously. Now, I have no real evidence in that rebuttal to say that Chris Formage isn't benevolent as a result of being able to appear to the player in a vision once, but I am saying that if every single event of Grand Theft Auto Online was canon, Los Santos would have to be exploding more or less 24-7. Now, there are other ways the Epsilon program weasels into GTA Online, but I'm not an online player, like at all. But, thanks to my research, I don't think it would impact the conclusion we're about to draw. Well, the conclusion we've drawn, but I guess we're already an hour and 11 minutes in length, I suppose it can't hurt to reiterate it. Chris Fromage, for the most part, is a con artist, and the Epsilon program is a glorified criminal organization. Though there's no denying the Epsilonists have some serious influence. Not only do they have incalculable sums of money, and the benefit of celebrity influence, but a stop by City Hall will reveal just how deeply rooted they are. A keen eye will have observed that on the Los Santos seal it appears as if the Epsilon program logo is above the crest. So I suppose that's a question of what came first, the Epsilon program or this seal. Regardless, it suggests, no matter which way you cut it, Chris Formage's influence is colossal. And yet, I still feel an urge to call him Mr. Cheese. Can the Epsilon program's unethical conduct be quelled at this point? I don't know. Even though their intentions are likely less than pure, their influence is enormous. Nobody is safe from their ability to exploit, and with a leadership of unsatiable greed, I would be very, very surprised if we don't encounter these fellows again in the future. And I suppose that brings us nicely to the end of today's monster of a video. Thank you all for watching it this long, I really appreciate if you suffered it out until now. I really hope you enjoyed it though, so if you did, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, only if you actually want to do that. And please remember, if you encounter any cults in the wild, don't go trusting them, okay? Unless they give you free pints, and then, then you can trust them, then it's okay. But only then! With any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, but until next time, please take care and goodbye.